Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back. I didn't think I would be back here doing this video this quickly, um, but I posted this video last night uh, before I went to bed, and I woke up this morning to emails and comments and all kinds of things. This is fantastic. I want to thank all of you for uh, commenting and for watching the video and kind of adding some ideas. Um, this is great. I learned a lot, and uh, it sounds like some of you are kind of interested in this little project, so I thought I'd do a quick follow-up video. I really have a lot of things to put on the bench here, and not a whole lot of time to be down here. Um, work has just gotten really crazy this year, and uh, we've just been, all of us have been out in the field an awful lot. But I thought I'd take some time here and do this, and uh, because it's, it's fun. Uh, some of the comments I've received, and I'm not going to read them off here, I'm just going to kind of paraphrase some of the things. Number one, uh, first and foremost, I was definitely, definitely wrong on one of these things, and it involves these two diodes, and I don't know what I was thinking other than I wasn't thinking. So <laughs> thank you guys for calling me out and straightening this out. If you put two normal diodes back to back like this, they're just not going to do their job. I mean, they would have to be Zener diodes um, for it to be, for it to do that. This was kind of a thing I was trying to do so that we didn't have to switch diodes in and out um, when we were going from NPN to PNP transistor testing. And that obviously won't work this way. We really do need a switch. So it was a very simple little modification to fix that. You can see the tiny little switch I put on there. If we look over on here, this is all that the switch is doing. I have the two outer legs, uh, contacts of the switch, connected to ground and to the power rail. And then the center part of the switch is actually going to the center part of these diodes. So when you're in one mode, um, it's going to short out the one diode and bring the one in and if you're in the other mode it's going to do the other thing short out the other diode and it's going to allow us to apply our 0.6 or 0.7 volts up here to kind of regulate um, conversely I had a couple other viewers say that they tried a similar experiment and they didn't use a diode at all they actually just used their dropping resistor and it worked just fine and quite frankly I tried that and it does raise the voltage here a little bit and it gives you a little bit more through here but um, it works you can still use the device and it'll still work so the only reason you would have this is to have a known voltage up here when you have this back bias diode in here you're always going to get that 0.6 or 0.7 volts it's not it's not going to change up here uh, dependent on what current. See, this since this is a resistor, if if this resistance changes here, the whole, the whole circuit resistance could change. The voltage will change. This kind of prevents that. That's all. But it'll work without it, and ha and for for what we're doing. Remember, this is not a transistor um, gain test device or anything like that. This is literally a transistor comparator, would be the best way to describe what it is. You can put two devices in here, and if they both react the same way to the same loads, then there will be a null point right here where there will be zero volts. If there's a difference between them, that difference will show up across here as an error voltage. So really, this is a comparator. And the, and again, for matching small signal transistors, uh, this works really, really well. So um, just to clarify that a little bit. Now, a couple other things after playing with this uh, that I've found. The other thing was I had some suggestions that maybe these 100Ks are too high and they're limiting the current too much. Um, so I experimented with that. I removed this 2K and I changed it into just a 100 ohm pot. And these 100Ks I turned into a 10K. So we, we made a substantial change. And what this is going to do 
is this is going to allow about a one milliamp roughly current through the transistor. So it's still not, not a whole lot of power, but it's enough. It's a little more than the 0.1 milliamp that, uh, that we were getting. Okay, and I'm being, I'm just giving you a rough number. If you want to do the math, it's actually a little more than one milliamp, and it's dependent on things, you know, but roughly one milliamp. So, 100 ohm and 10K. So, we go back over here and we look at it, and there you go. Now, the other thing I've noticed, uh, this, again, this is a prototype, so... Once again, uh, this isn't how you would build it, <laughs> obviously. These little sockets I used, they do loosen up with time. You plug a, a bunch of transistors in and out, in and out, they, they'll get a little bit wonky, and you really have to kind of push the transistor in there. So really, you, when you're doing this, you would want to have some sort of uh, little, uh, little hooks, little hook clips like, like these, um, these little hooks that you could put in or something like that that would grip the the leads of the transistors a little bit better and I'm sure there's other things that you all may have ideas about that would work better that being said with those couple little modifications and and again we could if we didn't want to use the 0.6 volts up here we could change uh, these to Zener diodes and get really fancy but I don't think that's necessary. It works really well how it is. Um, this is not designed for large power transistors. We could modify this circuit to, do, to draw more current um, to, and to provide a higher voltage and so forth with the zeners and with you know, different values of resistors. And if you were really going to try to match bigger power transistors, then uh, you probably want to do something like that. But my goal on this, when this all started, was that I get a lot of little tiny signal transistors that I have to replace on these little amplifiers that we work on. The problem is in the preamp circuit of those, those transistors are high failure items on the 1970s vintage uh, amplifiers that we service. So you know, I really needed to have a quick and easy way to match up transistors. You know, when you buy these little whatever they are, KSCs or 2Ns or BCs or whatever value little transistors they are, they're small signal transistors, you can buy them, you know, by the lots of a hundred, you know, and they're pennies each. But the problem is you have this big pile of transistors and you want to make sure you get two of them that are at least somewhat closely matched so that you, uh, the, the better match they are, the better they'll perform in, in that circuit, especially when you're talking about the, the preamp section of, of a receiver, you know, of, a little of an amplifier like that. Um, as you get out to the, to the high, you know, the power output and driver sections of the amplifier, those sections don't tend to have as much gain and therefore those sections don't tend to be affected by mismatched transistors as much as the preamp section of the amplifier is going to have. So really, I want, I'm concerned about matching these little tiny transistors. Again, we can go through all the hassle of connecting up the curve tracer and so forth, or we can actually use the little transistor device testers that are out there, the commercially available ones. But again, like I said, it's a price issue for some people and also they don't give you the flexibility of this the thing I like about this is how fast it is and by adjusting you know my circuit I can make it apply whatever I want to it and I have another idea that I'm going to try here before we close out this video but as you can see I have uh, a transistor in here right now it's a 2N2222 and I'm going to stick another one in here, just like this. And you're really not going to see a whole lot of change from the results of the test. So if we look up here, the same thing, it's millivolts. And it shows you the, uh, the difference in error. 
And again, this transistor is very wobbly. I move it around and you can see I'm wiggling the transistor. Now it's jumping all over the place. So I really need to use a, a different socket. And just for, uh, for reference, we're going to put a different NPN transistor in here that is uh, that has a, a different characteristic than a 2N2222, just so you could see. And you can see the, the voltage difference is a lot bigger. There's a lot more error because this is a different type of transistor, has different gain characteristics and so forth. So again, not a big change from the original circuit design I had. Uh, albeit that that diode was doing abs those diodes were doing really absolutely nothing <laughs> so I apologize for that but uh, it's still doing essentially the same thing we're just now passing a little more current through the transistor but it's way 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 below for instance a 2N2222 uh, can have a collect continuous collector current of up to 800 milliamps and I'm only putting about 1.1 milliamps. So we're still way in the safe zone of most small signal transistors like this. I'm sure there's some out there that, you know, special design that you wouldn't want to do that, but for the most part, anything we're going to test is going to work in that range. So uh, that's it. I'm going to try one more little experiment that I was thinking about, and, uh, and then that's it. I, I'm going to end this video. Again, I love the comments. Keep them coming, guys. Um, I even had an email of somebody that has a, a circuit fab business and uh, said they would be willing to do uh, a layout of a, of a printed circuit board and let me post it for all of you if you decide you want to build one of these. So when I get a, a better design, uh, get a more finalized design, I'm going to submit that to him and I think I'm going to take him up on his offer. I think that's just really, really nice of, of someone to be willing to do that and to share with us like that. And uh, again, keep the comments coming. The more ideas we get, the better we can make this little device. And uh, those of us who are into this hobby of restoring old uh, audio equipment and you know working with things where you need matched transistors, uh, this is kind of a fun little project to work on. Any of us can go out and buy something, but it's really cool when you kind of build something like this. So, all right, let me try my one last little thing, and I may be back, I may not. <laughs> but uh, in any case, thank you once again, all of you. I can't thank you enough. This, is, this has been a really fun video here. Okay, everybody, I'm going to end this video, <clears throat> this video with one last experiment. And uh, I'm going to leave it up to all of you to comment and see what you think. Um, I've just done a quick little observation. I haven't really gotten into anything beyond just making some observations here. But what happens if we took this circuit, not even modified, just leave it as is, and we connected a 24 volt center tapped transformer so it's 12.6 0 12.6 volts and we just connected it right to the center tap goes to ground and the two outer leads go to the plus and minus volts leave everything else the same and instead of using a voltmeter we connect our oscilloscope probe to that and look at the scope so look in here right now and we have nothing in there right now and we're going to put our oscilloscope on here and take a look at it all right now there's nothing in the socket I'm going to take my reference transistor that we were using and I'm going to plug it in right now give me a second to line this up and I don't know if you can see this because the lines are very thin, but we're off the scale and we're looking at 60 hertz. As you can see, there's a 60 hertz sine wave in there. And if we shrink the signal way down, there's your signal. All right. So I'm going to go back up to where we were, 500 millivolts. And now I'm going to put another 2N2222 transistor in there.
And what happens? If we look, don't mind the cursor, I'll shut that off here. There. Um, if we look on there, we see some little bumps, little pulses, and we can make this a little more sensitive. You can see those a little bit better. If we take another transistor, same type, just another, just another 2N2222, and we stick it in there. Same thing. And you can see the amplitude is a little bit different. Now, let's put our transistor in that is a different type of transistor. It's instead of a 2N2222, this is a BC547. What do we see? Great big difference. So, what this is telling me is if we use an AC signal instead of applying a DC signal and we watch the transistors switching on and off as the signal as the uh, sine wave reverses and we still have our comparator circuit we can very very easily see how these transistors perform with one another under a real load so again I don't know what are your thoughts on this um, do you think this might be a useful thing to do? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious. Uh, I'm going to post this video. I actually uh, don't have a lot of time today to play with this, but I really want to get this posted because I want to... A lot of you watch videos over the weekend, and I want to get this posted. It's a Saturday right now, and I want to try to get this out there and hear what you all have to say about it. Um, is this... I mean, am I doing a fool's errand here, or is this something that might be useful? I don't know. So let me know. And as always, I thank you all for watching. I wish you peace, joy, happiness, and good health in your lives. And again, I thank you all in advance for your comments and questions and all those good things and emails. And until next time, stay well. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.